so in the last couple of lectures we discussed some basic things and then we learn about variables we learn about data types today uh, we are going to uh, uh, i'm going to introduce you to a new uh, well it's a basic thing but it's a new for thing new new thing for you who have not read c++ before uh, i'll introduce you to the some of the arithmetic expressions and uh, operators what are the operators we can use in c++ and uh, i will also discuss upon uh, increment and decrement operators then uh, i'll be you know, the relational operators uh, and operator precedence what sort of like remember in arithmetic you have was sort of a board mass rule uh, similar uh, rules also exist in programming and stuff when you program a arithmetic expression how, which uh, things take precedence which uh, things uh, work first and then uh, go to uh, the next level and so on so that is what we will learn today okay so let's uh, start we begin with arithmetic operators and expressions uh, here and uh, what are expressions arithmetic expressions like uh, they're like sentences uh, expressions are made up of constants uh, variables and operators if you combine all of them they will make an expression using some specific grammatical rule or using some syntax so that is important so all those are called expressions they are equivalent to statements or sentences in any languages so in c++ in particular there are several operators which i am defining one by one uh, there can be a, a, a unary plus like for first of all a plus sign unary uh, unary means it only needs one argument see there are there can be binary operators there can be ternary operator there can be tertiary operator there can be unary operator unary operator just requires one argument as opposed to addition addition is a binary operator which needs two things so if you want to add you need at least two things to add x and y but this unary plus means you are uh, you are giving a positive sign to something unary minus means you are giving a negative sign to something so it, it only one argument is required whereas in addition subtraction multiplication and division and modulus you need at least uh, two uh, arguments so they are all binary operators whereas this plus and this minus is a unary operator so there are unary plus unary minus then you have addition operator which you can use simple plus sign x plus y you have a subtraction operator which has a minus sign x minus y you have a multiplication operator which is not x but a star so it is denoted by a star so x into y x multiplied by y means x star y so a multiplication mark is written as star in c++ similarly division is the usual division is a is a is a is a, is a, is a slash sign uh, x uh, upon y it's a floating point division or integer division there can be two kind of divisions uh, which we, we will discuss a little later what is the difference between these two so there can be a real number division or a integer division only then modulus modulus uh, gives you a remainder from the integer division if you, if you are given two integers uh, like mod modulus you all understand what is the modulus of x upon y so what is the remainder after y after x is divided by y what is the remainder that is called the modulus of that particular thing so that is how we will uh, the, these are some of the important operators in the c++ language as i told you earlier the first two operators are unary the remaining all other operators are binary operators divisions uh, such as 5 upon 0 and modulus such as 5 modulo 0 this is a percentage sign modulus is a percentage sign modulus operator they will both produce error computers cannot divide by 0 computers cannot find a modulo modulus uh, of uh, 5 modulo 0 because uh, computer doesn't know how to divide by 0 because it does not know infinity it is a finite thing it does not know infinity at all in floating point division however if, if it is a if there is none of these uh, arguments either first argument or the second argument is a real number or a floating point number it will get, it will be treated as integer division if one of the argument is a floating point number then it will be treated as uh, floating point division and 
the C++ people have reserved a name for that. If you do 5.0 divided by 0, 0.0, it will pro produce a value called INF, INF. So that is a special infinity value. So infinity value is defined as INF, but uh, in practice, there is no such value called infinity in, on a computer. Now modulus operation can be performed only with the integers, that you have to remember. You cannot produce, perform a modulus operation on real numbers. Uh, if, if, if you try, if, suppose one of your variable is defined as float or double or long double and then you try this modulus operation on one of those variables, the, your compiler, compiler will return a, a syntax error, an error. So this will tell you right away that there is an error in your program. Now, arithmetic expressions in C++ must be entered into computer in straight line form, not through a, a, in this, uh, not through enter uh, sign. In, it, they have to be written in a straight line form. Parentheses are used to uh, control the uh, operational precedence. So they are used in the same manner as in algebraic expression. So you can write A multiplied by, then within parentheses, B plus C, parentheses close. That means b plus c will be carried out first and then the resultant value will be multiplied by a. What is the rules of operator precedence? Same as baud mass as you have uh, in your earlier classes you must have read the baud mass rule b o d m a s baud mass uh, which is uh, bracket open uh, division multiplication, addition and subtraction. So this is the, the way the operators are preceded unless they are given in parentheses. So expression within parentheses are evaluated first, again by the rule of baud mass. In case of nested parentheses, the innermost pair of parentheses is applied first. So this is how you do things. Multiplication, division and modulus operations are applied next. And if there are several such operations, there are several multiplication, then operators are applied from left to right. First the leftmost, then the it goes to the right. Addition and subtractions are applied last. And in case of multiple such addition and subtraction, again, operators are applied from left to right. So you go from left to right in case of multiple things. Otherwise, the baud mass rule apply. Now there are some relational operator. When you compare a couple of things, you already know some of relational uh, symbols in arithmetic like uh, less than sign, greater than sign. Similar thing can be used in C++ also less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to sign and not equal to. So these are uh, uh, six relational operators in C++. One is this sign is the less than sign and you use them as x less than y. Usually these relational operators are used within uh, a if statement or like you are you you are you are verifying a condition so it will return a value of true or false this relational thing will always return a value true or false if is x less than y if x is really less than y then it will return a value true or one if x is greater than y then it will return a value zero because this is false so that is a false thing so greater than again is the same two arithmetic thing but the less than or equal to sign is a little bit different than the arithmetic less than or equal to sign where the there is a parallel line of this to this line here you since on a computer keyboard you do not have that sign so you write less than or equal to as less than sign and then equal to sign and the syntax is like that x less than equal to y similarly for greater than or equal to sign you have greater than sign and equal to sign there this is the interesting thing equal to sign is not a single equal sign because single equal sign I told you in the last class is used that is called an assignment operator it is used to assign values to a variable single operate single uh, equality sign is a assignment operator double equality sign is a relational operator so you need to be able to differentiate between them never confuse between them several people confuse between them a equal to sign and an assignment operator equal to sign there are two equal sign equality signs are relational operator whereas a single equality sign is a assignment operator where you assign a value to a particular variable here you are comparing two values it will always return either a true or a false 
then not equal to you cannot have a, a, a equality sign and then cut it uh, just like that because on a computer keyboard you do not have that so you cannot type it so there is exclamation sign followed by a equality sign which is equivalent to not equal to so x not equal to y so that is how you use them now if you reverse the pair of symbols in a relational operator normally it is a syntax operator like uh, you cannot write for less than or equal to you cannot write equal to and then a less than sign you have to write first less than and then equal to sign and the uh, and I, this thing I already told you that you cannot confuse between the equal to operator with the assignment operator equals that will result in a logical error and this logical error means your computer will not be able to detect that your results will be uh, illogical so it's a logical error which is uh, which go undetected by a computer compiler so you have to be very very careful with this uh, uh, the confusion between double equals and single equals right so here are the some sample C++ statements and this is how you write, you write a, uh, uh, we have not discussed the control structures yet, so we will discuss that in the next class, but here if is a control structure, it's a conditional number, uh, so conditional operator, so if number one is less than number two, then what you do, see out this, uh, the, the put operator, number one put operator in double quote sign less than sign and then number two so if this condition is true then this statement will be out otherwise this will not be done so these are the sort of a control structure which we'll learn in the next class but that is how it does computer only does what you tell it to do it's a very very obedient servant of you it's a, but it's it's come it's a complete slave to you so if you uh, put anything wrong in your program it will do the wrong thing so what it, you have to be careful when you program things. Now another example is if number one equals to number two, then do this. Otherwise, do something else. So that's how you do. Now assignment operator, as I told you in the last, last slide, the assignment operator evaluates the expression on the right of the operator and assigns the resulting value to the variable on its left. Like when you say x equals ten. So the operator takes 10 and assigns to x uh, to the left of this variable, left of this uh, operator. In any given arithmetical expression, the assignment operator has lowest precedence. So this will be used last and, is, and it associates from right to left. I remember the arithmetic operators always uh, performed left to right, but assignment operator uh, associates itself from right to left. So if there is an expression of the form x equals y equals 0, then first 0 will be assigned to y and then this the result of this expression will be assigned to x, so then assignment 0 to x. So if I, I may have x equals 3 plus y equals 0. So 0 will be assigned to y, then 3 will be added and then 3 will be, will be assigned to x. So other than the assignment operator equals C++ also provide several compound assignment operator for abbreviating assignment operation. What are the compound assignment operator? Like here. And now here we come from uh, come to C++. So if this is suppose there is a statement. See now people who do not know computer programming languages they will be uh, a little critical about this statement. C equals C plus 3. What does that mean? That is a little strange isn't it? This particular value is equal to value plus 3. Doesn't uh, make sense, but in programming it makes sense. It means that the present value of C, whatever is the present value of C, a value of 3 will be added to that and the, that will be assigned as a new value of C. So you are modifying the value of C with this statement. So C equals C plus 3 is a valid statement in with of course is with the semicolon. It's a valid statement in C++ and it, this can be shortened, this can be abbreviated with the addition assignment. I can write this statement as C plus equals 3, C plus equals 3. So this, operat this operator goes before this and it may, it, it, these two operator, these two statements have the same meaning. C plus equals 3 means C equals C plus 3. So, in general, any statement of the form 
variable equals variable operator expression variable equals variable operator expression remember variable equals variable operator expression can be written as variable uh, operator equals expression so this this they will change places and this variable will go away so in the same variable appears on both sides that is the condition if it's not a c equals b plus 3 will be having this statement if the same variable occurring on the both sides of this assignment operator then only you can abbreviate that uh, statement so if the same variable appears on both sides of the assignment operator and operator is one of the binary operator plus minus multiply divide or modulo then only it can be written in the form as variable operator equals expression variable operator equals expression it, both of them have the same meaning right so let's go for several other examples with all those binary operators c this means c equals c plus 5 this means d equals d minus 4 this means e equals e into 3 this means f equals f multi divided by 4 this means g mean g equals g modulo 7 so they, these are the uh, things so now you understand both all of uh, these uh, operators and how can they be abbreviated so this is a simple way of writing that this is uh, sort of a you can say a little bit complicated way but uh, looks uh, it, it makes you look smarter it's not I will not say that this is an elegant way this is more elegant way but this makes you look uh, smarter than others people will not understand immediately what does that mean they have to interpret that so these days people when they want to show off their intelligence they use this kind of things uh, that's uh, and it saves a space when you write uh, this thing uh, right so it depends on person to person whether you want to use this or this it may remains same now there are special operators called increment and decrement operators they are the special form of this abbreviated versions of uh, uh, binary operators when you have c equals c plus one or c equals c minus one a equals a plus one a equals a minus one then there is a special increment and decrement operators can be used when the expression on the right hand side is one uh, like number one uh, i'm not saying anyone but number one the digit one then so if the so c plus plus also provide two unary operation for adding one or subtracting one you don't have to put the assignment operator uh, at all there it is much shorter form of uh, the even shorter than the last slide what, what we discussed so if i just want to add one or subtract one into a value of a numeric variable then these unary increment operator plus plus or unary decrement operator minus minus can be used so plus plus means the that particular numeric variable is increased by one minus minus min one mean minus minus means that if it is associated with a sum variable the value of that variable will be decreased by one so each of these two operators can be used as prefix or postfix but the meaning are different for both of them that is very very important the meaning changes accordingly if it is used as prefix if you are writing plus plus a then there is another meaning if you are writing a plus plus then there is another meaning in both the cases the value is increased by one but when it is increased that makes a difference when used as a prefix the value of the variable is incremented before being used in the expression in which it resides so suppose this uh, i write a plus plus somewhere in an arithmetic expression so if i write uh, plus plus a then first the value will be increased and then it is used in that particular expression if you write a plus plus then first it is used in the expression the older value is used in the expression and then after using it it will be increased by one so when used as a postfix or a suffix its value is first used in the expression and then the value is incremented or decremented so it depends on whether you use minus minus a or a minus minus if the operator comes first then the value is increase increased or decreased first if the operator comes later then value is decreased or increased after use being used in the expression so these are again very very important stuff if in a program it is written 
uh, x plus plus then it's a totally different meaning if it is written plus plus x so these operators are summarized here in this particular table plus plus is a pre-increment plus plus can also be used as a post increment as a plus plus as a pre-increment is it is plus plus a what is the meaning increment a by 1 then use the new value of a in the expression in which it is being used or it, where it lives where it resides for a post increment operator it is a plus plus that means use the current value of a in the expression in which resides then increment a by 1 and store it again similarly pre decrement operator and post decrement operators work for uh, decreasing the value minus minus a will decrement a by 1 then use the new value of a in the expression whereas a minus minus will use the current value of a in the expression whatever is stored currently in the memory first of all that is used and then it is decremented a by uh, 1 and then again is stored in the uh, at the at that same memory so next time you use it will be one less than that now whenever a variable is incremented or decremented in a statement by itself then the pre-increment or pre-decrement and post-increment, post-decrement have the same effect. So if it is uh, just a simple statement, it is not in a arith arithmetic expression. Suppose simple statement plus plus m, m plus plus. So it doesn't make a difference whether you write plus plus m or m plus plus because it is not being used. After this statement, the value of uh, m would be increased by 1. So it will produce the same result. However, a equals plus plus b and a equals b plus plus will have different values of a in first case what will happen b will be incremented first so in a b plus 1 will be stored in this, this case in a b will be stored and then b's value will be incremented later on so these two will produce different effects and that's what i was uh, I, I meant when i told you uh, that if it is used as a prefix or suffix it makes a hell of a difference okay the last thing which i want to discuss today would be a type conversion see earlier we defined different kind of data types now uh, i will uh, i'm just uh, uh, arguing that different kind of data types can be converted into other data types first is a for user defined conversion or a specific explicit conversion another is type coercion it's an automatic conversion by the compiler depending on the statement you are using so type coercion is an automatic conversion of an operand from one data type to another data type like here suppose i say int x equals 4.5 how although 4.5 is a real number but since i have defined x as an integer so an integer value of this expression will be stored in x which will be 4. So this part, the fractional part will be ignored, only the integral part will be stored here. So this is a forced type conversion or type coercion. Uh, so, well, it's an automatic type, automatic conversion. Suppose I say float x equals to int y into float z. So it will be, since it is a float x, uh, but it, so the ultimate value will be a floating point number. Integer values and floating point values are stored differently in computer memory that you will learn a little later when we discuss the number system. So only the corresponding type of data can be stored for a defined variable. Here in X, only the, I can only store a full float value. Well, integer value can be stored in a float number as some number 0. So if an integer value is assigned to a variable declared as a float variable, the computer will implicitly convert the integer value into floating point number or vice versa so this is called a basically a implicit conversion type coercion is implicit type conversion so uh, just to, to give you an example suppose if i say int number equals 4.5 and when then when i, when I, when I say see out uh, put operator number uh, will produce the output 4 because 4.5 cannot be stored in number the number 4 is stored in number so when i make a c out on that it will give me 4. now there can be a type promotion promotion means towards the higher uh, side integer or lower floating pointer higher so conversion of an operand with lower data type into one into a higher data type is called promotion 
type demotion is higher data type into a lower data type that is called a type demotion generally uh, uh, when we have mathematical expression which consists of uh, mixed data type they lead to type coercion or the implicit conversion if i have int number one number two float average then average equals number one plus number two divided by 2.0 automatically it will give me a floating point number so it will be a promotion uh, type promotion what are the rules for coercion or the implicit conversion care short unsigned int and short uh, again i repeated that they are automatically promoted to int when operating on values of different data types the lower one is promoted to the type of higher one like here it happened these all these are promoted to higher one and you got a floating point number when using the assignment operator however the type of expression on the right will be converted to the type of variable on left like uh, in the last slide it happened x equals 4.5 x was stored as 4 so right whatever is the value on the right that will be converted to the type of the variable it depends on the type of the variable what is written on the left side of the assignment operator so that is how the type conversion takes place now type casting what is type casting to explicitly define a type to, to, to make a program clear and error free if you want to make your program very intelligent then you should use type casting which is an explicit type conversion as you explicitly explicitly say that what you want to do so a c plus plus cast operation consists of a data type and then within parenthesis the expression to be converted so suppose in the last example i had number one plus number two which was automatically being converted into float but here i am explicitly saying that first you convert this number one plus number two to the floating point and then you divide by this two as floating point number and then uh, if, if I say number, suppose I want a integer value of average, then I explicitly say num1 equals int average. However, num1 is already defined as an int and a computer could have done a uh, implicit conversion, but I do not want to confuse the program or confuse the reader. I am explicitly saying that this average should be converted into an integer type and then assigned to num1. So these type casting operation can, uh, these, there are three kind of syntaxes possible. Uh, all three have uh, similar meanings. Like int var is called int float var. Suppose there is a variable called floating point variable. It's, a, it's, it's not a keyword. I'm, I have defined that a variable name float var, but just to make the uh, name look more clearer, this is the floating point number, this is the integer point number, integer number. So this form is called functional notation because it is written as if this is a function. Remember, main was a function written between parentheses. So int float var. This is a functional notation by for the explicit conversion. Or if there is a prefix notation. I can also write similar. It will have the same effect. Int var equals int float var. So it, uh, change the float var variable into the int type. Or I can also say static cast int float var this is a keyword notation the static cast in static cast is a keyword so you yeah, are using that uh, which uh, is, is is a predefined keyword in c++ for float var and this is an integer number so these three uh, equivalent uh, ways can be used in type casting the use of keyword casting is always recommended because it is the most clear way but uh, the first one is also okay. Usually, people use the first one. Uh, so, the, so, the functional notation has a limitation. Although it is being commonly used, but it does have a limitation. The data type name must be a single identifier. So, if I cannot say unsigned int. Int for int, it was okay. But unsigned int has a blank space here. So, it's a combination of identifier. I cannot use that. For that, Either I use this within parentheses, that means either the prefix notation or the keyword notation, or like a static cast in the brackets, static unsigned int, and then float var. So these two are allowed. The first one is not allowed because there are two uh, things here. Now, how the division is different for integer and floating point? When a number of uh, integer type is divided by a non zero number of type int, the result 
but for the computer it, it is not in general true like 5 upon 2 will not give you an integer but the computer will always give an integer if you say 5 upon 2 your resultant value will be 2 not 2.5 if you say float 5 upon float 2, then the resultant value will be 2.5. Otherwise, remember if you say uh, 10 upon 2, that is 5. Fine. But if you say 9 upon 2, that will be 4. So computers, uh, are, as I told you, they are completely slave of you. So whatever you tell them to do, that's what they are doing. They, they do not know what is the right answer. Right answer, you know. Computers do not know. So you have to program accordingly. So to find a floating point value in a division, at least one of the numbers should be of type float. Then the others will be automatically converted into floating point. So at least one of those numbers should be a floating number. Suppose you have int a, b, then you should say float a upon float b or float a upon b or a upon float b. At least one of those should be defined as or converted as float to get a floating point number in c. So that, that, will, that is the only way to get the accurate result in a division of integers. Otherwise, you may get uh, wrong answers. If one operand is a constant integer, then we can use the floating point value to get the correct division. Like here, I can also suppose there is a constant 2, 3, 5, 35, whatever. So I can write it as a floating point number 35.0 or 5.0. Then it will give me a floating point number because the condition is already, already satisfied one of the operand is the floating point number so that's why it is working here so what did we learn today uh, we uh, or until now in last three uh, lectures we learned the basics of c++ now we, we 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 have already made the background we know what are the alphabets are what are the simple grammatical rules are what are the operators uh, how, how we, what kind of operators we can use grammar we are we, we are we will keep learning uh, as we go along but yes the basic uh, skeleton is already built now in the next class we will uh, leap on a different uh, kind of thing it uh, we go away from the alphabets and all digits etc and we'll learn about the control structures how the statements the flow of uh, statements is controlled in c++ so that is uh, going to be a very very important step in your learning so we'll see you then bye bye